Here I'm going to show you guys how to make a regular expression formula in Excel. No VBA, no macros, a straight up custom formula. And a regular expression formula or check allows you to ensure that the contents of a cell match a certain pattern. In this case, we want to make sure that the first three characters of this cell are lowercase text characters, followed by a dash, three numbers, another dash, and a single uppercase letter. And we're going to do all of that with a single formula. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. In this tutorial, what I'm going to do is to teach you a method for creating a regular expression formula. There is no native function in Excel that allows you to do this, to check a pattern. We have a few things here and there, but it's not very good. So I'm going to show you the method by which you can create a formula, which will end up being this big guy right here. Don't worry, we're going to do it in pieces. Relax. So I'll show you the method for that, but I'm also going to give you a truly special formula, this guy right here, that allows you to ensure that only the allowed characters are within a string. In this case, we only want three lowercase letters. This is the A to Z regular expression check. And this is the really special formula that you're going to get from this tutorial because it works not only with letters, but with whatever list of characters you want. And because this is the unique special formula from this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and cover it first and show you how it works and how to change it for your data set and what you're trying to do. And then after that, I'll show you the method that you can use to incorporate this and the other formulas here into the big formula here. But as you can see down here with the trues and false returns, you can use this formula separate from the big one. So don't worry. If this is all you want from this tutorial, then you don't have to watch after we talk about that. Very quickly, I'm going to explain the outline of this table just so you know what's going on. What I've done here is I've broken up the requirements into individual parts, and you're going to want to do that when you're building such a big formula, but I'll talk more about that in a moment. And the part we want to deal with right now is the three lowercase letters to start. So in the system I'm going to show you, the very next step is to pull out or extract the required pieces from the master cell up here, the cell whose pattern we want to match. So here I have a very simple text extraction function, left A2, get three characters from that cell. So now we have what we want to match, basically. And now all I have to do is create a formula that matches this with the allowed characters. So now that you're caught up, let us go ahead and move on to this formula. Now, if you're familiar with my tutorials, you may wonder if I'm going to deconstruct this right now. I am not going to do this right now. Don't worry about that. I'll go over that at the end of the tutorial. So this formula right here will end up returning a true value if this passes your test or a false value if it does not pass your test. So as you can see right now, it passes the test. Let us go ahead and we will change the cell up here and put a semicolon at the end. Now it is a false. It no longer passes the test. So that's what we're going to do. And the benefit of true and false is once you have this, you can do whatever you want with it. You can incorporate it into all kinds of formulas and then make a decision based off of whether or not it passed the test. And what this formula specifically does is it checks a list that we have created to make sure that each character here is an allowed character. So we will check the A separately, the S separately, and the A separately to ensure that each one is allowed. And that's what actually makes the formula complicated, but I'm not going to cover that just yet. So that's how it works. We check an allowable list of characters. You can put whatever you want in those characters. You can just put an A and an S in the characters. You can put five letters. You can put a semicolon, a few numbers, a few letters. And the only thing you have to change to get this to work for your setup is everywhere you see B6 right here, it just points to this cell. Just make sure that this reference right here is what will be the text you want to check. It could be a cell, or maybe you want to put the left function that's right here directly in place of B6. So you do it right here, one more B6, and one more B6. 
so those three places. And then what you need, most important perhaps, is the list itself right here. This is a name that we've created, alphabet lower, and it contains our list. So let us go ahead and take a look at that list. And note that I have a list of values down here, A to Z and 0 to 9. A to Z is how you might represent what we're about to do if you had a proper formula in Excel to do this or a proper function, but we don't. So in order to check for the alphabet, any character from A to Z, we have to type out the entire alphabet. And it's a good idea to do this first in a cell so that you can make sure everything is okay, you did it correctly, and everything is either all uppercase or all lowercase. Make it the same case, that's very important. So once you get that, go in here, copy your contents, and we can go to the Formulas tab, Name Manager, go ahead and click New, and you'll create a name. Here we already have it, so I will click Edit. And then down here, you want to put the list of allowable characters. Put it within quotation marks and pop an equal sign in front of there, just to make sure everything gets entered correctly. And now to the name. The name is important because you're going to use this in your formulas, and you should know what this name contains based off of its name. So it is the alphabet, and it is lowercase. So I've called it alphabet lower. That's very important because when you are checking, for instance, for lowercase characters over here, you need to know if this list contains lowercase characters or not. So make your name descriptive so that you don't have to keep going back to the name manager to see what it is supposed to contain. And this is where you maintain your list of allowable characters. Make sure everything is good. Then go back here. Do double check it, by the way, when you're back here. Click the correct name. Look down here. Make sure everything's OK. It's a bit finicky and easy to mess up this name manager, I have to say. Also here, I have another name. We're not going to cover it in this example, but it's just for numbers. So 1, 2, 0. And I'm not going to talk about that right now, but that's what that is. So you have your list that you would like to check now. Alphabet lower. Now you just go into this formula, which you are going to copy paste into your workbook. I do not recommend typing it out by hand. You're going to go over here to where it says alphabet lower, hit the backspace or delete key and start typing your name. There we see alphabet lower. I'm going to hit tab to fill it in. And there we go. Adjust B6 to point to the correct cell or have the correct text extraction function in there for each one of these references. Then hit enter, and you have a lovely regular expression formula that returns true or false. Now, and I hope you've watched up to this point if all you wanted was this formula, in newer versions of Excel, you do not have to hit any special keys to input this. However, if you are in a previous version of Excel, I guess that would be anyone before 365, you have to hit Control, Shift, Enter because this is an array formula technically. It's very easy in newer versions of Excel like I have to forget that there are even array formulas. But it is an array formula, so Control, Shift, Enter, and that's what you have to do to make it work. And before I move on, a couple things that you could change with this formula. First to note that this right here, it doesn't just have to be letters. I know I already said that, but I want to say it again. Make this list contain whatever characters you want to be allowed over here. Now, this is a case sensitive check. If you are doing a regular expression formula, you should do a case sensitive check, which means that lowercase is treated different than uppercase. However, if you do not want to do that, there are two things that you can do. You can surround this with a function that equalizes it. So you can make this uppercase by surrounding it with the upper function or lowercase by surrounding it with a lower function, and then doing the same thing right here, surrounding this with the upper function or with the lower function, the same one that you put right here so that you can equalize it so that you're comparing apples to apples. However, you could also change find to search. So if you forget if find is case sensitive or not, just backspace the D 
and you'll see right here, returns a starting position, blah, 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 find is case sensitive. And if we go to type search, all the way at the end, not case sensitive. And you can see search has find text within text, start num, and find find text within text, start num. So if you want to change that, you can. And just take note that find is case sensitive, search is not. All right. So let us take this guy and let us go over here and input him and do a little bit of deconstruction. So deconstruction is just where I break apart the formula and show you how it works. So what is so tricky about this one is this right here, this guy. Now let me go to the left just a little bit for our characters here, A, S, A. We cannot search a list for ASA specifically because then the A and the S and the A have to be in that order. For a regular expression search formula, I want to make sure that these are just letters A to Z. I don't care which letter is here or which one's here or which one is here. As a result of that, we have to check each one individually. And that's what this guy does. It takes the A, the S, and the A, or whatever. It works for however many characters you have, and it explodes it so that we can check each one individually. And that's what makes this an array. So I have it selected over here. Watch what happens when I hit F9. ASA will be split up into each individual character. We have the quotation marks A, S, A in a beautiful, lovely array. And since it is an array, find will take the A, say, hey, are you in this list? OK. Are you in this list S? Yes. Are you in this list? Yes. And then it will return a series of numbers. So if I highlight that now and go here, we have 1, 19, and 1. What that means is that it found A in position 1, S in position 19, and A in position 1 of our a list of allowed characters. Now what I'm going to do is use the count function to tell me how many numbers there are here, because that's how many characters were found in the list of allowable characters. In this case, count is going to give me three. It found three characters in the list of allowable characters. Now I want to make sure that every character here is in the list of allowable characters. What does that mean that I need to do? Well, I need to make sure that this number that we just got here using count equals the count or the number of characters in this cell. There are three characters. Each character must be found in the list. So that's what we do. We count the number of characters right here. And we get equals three equals three and then it is going to return true or false. And we get a true in this case. Let me break out the find. And let's pull it over here. In new versions of Excel, you're going to have this feature spill. And it's going to, let's take off the bold and the underline. It's going to, if it's an array value, spill the results into cells underneath where you have the formula. So I have a formula here. I don't have anything here or here. Excel just spilled it over there so I could see the 1, the 19, and the 1, the result of the find formula. Now look what happens if I replace the S with a 1. We get 1 value 1. How does that work with what I just explained over here? Well, let us run it. 1 value 1. So 2 characters from this cell were located in the list of allowed characters. One was not, it returned a value. Now count is going to count this and it's going to return two because there are only two numbers in it. That means that only two characters were in the list of allowed characters. But how many characters did I have in the cell? Because that's how many this should equal. 
well, I had 3. 2 does not equal 3, so I get false. It is a complex and a tricky formula. So now you know how this formula works, but I did skip one little thing. The row and the indirect. Thankfully, it's not as difficult to explain as it seems. So let's go here where we have the find function, okay? And we have the mid that explodes everything out to that. Let us go ahead and put that in its own cell. A1, A. All right, here all we do is we get in the correct letters. A1, A. And here, this looks complex, but it really, really isn't. All that we need is some way to say, hey, I want you to get the first letter here, or the first character, the second character, and then the third character. If there's a fourth character, get a fourth character. A fifth, get a fifth character. So what I need is this. I need this list of one, two, three. In new versions of Excel, you could use the sequence function, and it would probably do a very good job of this. But for here, what we have to do to create this list is to use row and indirect. Let's go ahead and break it out over here. Equals row, indirect. One, two, three. Perfect. That's what we want. Indirect is a funny little guy. Reading the definition of it does not help explain it. What indirect allows you to do is to, inside of it, create a reference, like a range reference, and then spit that out back to its containing formula. So what we want to do here is to figure out how to create this, one to three. There are three characters, so we need it to be one to three. If there were four characters, we need it to be one to four. If there were five characters, one to five. So how do we do that? Well, first we start off with one colon, because that's not going to change. And then all we do is count the number of characters. Remember, the left function just gets the correct characters in place, a1a. And then we use the len function to count that, three. Then we use the ampersand to concatenate that and combine it. Now we have one colon three, and then we spit that out back to the row function using indirect. If I calculate this here, it's not going to be very helpful. It looks like that. But all that it's actually doing is just equals row one colon three, like that. And that's a trick that allows us to get one, two, three in an array. And once you get one, two, three in an array here, it then tells the mid function to go here, go to the text, start number one, and return one character, which is A. Then it says, hey, go to the second character, start number two, and get one character. So that's the one. And then go to the third character, that's the A right here, and one character long. So this, since it is an array, says run the mid function three times. The first time, use one as this argument, then use two, then use three. And the result is that we get a lovely array A1A. I'm aware that this is very, very confusing. <laughs> Unfortunately, Excel does not provide us with a lovely, easy way to make regular expression functions or formulas. So if you made it this far in the tutorial, congratulations, you are a trooper. And I hope that you've been able to get something from my explanation. This formula involves a lot of concepts and it can seem tricky, but at the end of the day, download the workbook, copy paste the formula where you need it, change the three cell references and then in this case, just change the left function to whatever function you need. And change alphabet lower to the list of allowable characters for your data set. And that's all for this tutorial. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.